Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of the MPCNC build series. This series will be just me documenting my way through building uh, MPCNC Primo. And uh, this is not a tutorial guide or anything like that. I've done similar videos for my 3D printers, three series so far, the Tempo Black Widow mod series, the Boron 2 series and the Boron 0 series. So. If you're interested in them, you can check them out, but uh, again, this is not a tutorial. I will definitely make mistakes along the way, and uh, at least with the Boron 2 and Boron 0, I knew what I was doing, because I did have experience with 3D printers. Well, this is going to be my first CNC machine, so I'm definitely going to make some mistakes along the way, so... Again, don't take this for a tutorial, but just take these videos for what they are. It's just my journey through building, assembling, testing, using the MPCNC Primo and uh, well yeah that's about it again if I make if I uh, want to make a tutorial with you I will label them as such so in the future you might see them but this is not it so uh, yeah without further delay let's get to the video itself and I'm going to start by running through running you through some of the parts that I have chosen so these are the parts that I have for the build so far these, this is not everything, I'm still waiting for a few parts here and there, but uh, yeah, you can see most of them. I'm going to start with the metal parts. Normally, what they recommend is using uh, conduits, they're hollow inside with a millimeter or so of thickness. Well, I actually found a source for this that was actually pretty cheap for what it is, so I went with these. 303 grade stainless steel uh, brown uh, cylinders so they are uh, full inside they do weigh a decent amount the entire uh, package shipping weight of that was 24 kilos or something like that so they do weigh a decent amount but uh, yeah I, I just chose them because I could I don't know if they have any objective benefit i mean i'm not an engineer i'd assume that it, it'd be more rigid but uh, yeah again i don't know but just went with that there is one problem with that choice though and that is uh, you need to use these nut traps on the z-axis and these need to go inside and i can't do that obviously but as i said these are just nut traps so what i can do is just tap the uh, steel piece so uh, that's not going to be a big issue it's just something to keep in mind but uh, rest of the parts are pretty standard so I have five NEMA 17 motors here and the uh, rest of the black color printed parts except uh, two more of these guys are cooking right now when they're done I'm going to move on to the accent parts and those I'm going to print in Isan, uh, I think this was pine green. So um, yeah, you can see the choice of color for the accent parts. Uh, the reason I want with that color is pretty simple. You have to print these parts in PLA. I'm usually not a big fan of PLA, I print stuff in ABS. but uh, They do have a good reason for recommending PLA, so I listen to their advice and print it with PLA so uh, yeah I had to get new materials and they were out of grey so I had to choose something else and I don't like Isan's red which normally would be my second accent choice but the Isan's red is really pink so yeah I went with this so we'll see how it turns out hopefully it will look pretty nice but we'll see for the controller I'm using the Big 3 Tech uh, SKR Mini 1.3, no, 2.0. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be controlling the motors. It has the stepper drivers integrated in it, so you don't have to deal with step sticks, which is nice. But uh, again, we'll see how well this works. It's not one of the recommended parts that they have, but I also don't see why this won't work other than some config changes. So. Uh, yeah, I went with this, and another nice bonus of going with a big 3-tech unit is the mighty big 3-tech duck. Praise be to him, my cat will love it, I'm sure. And uh, mm, yeah, that's the 
electronics. You can see that I assembled just four of these parts with the bearings. This is just to do a test fit, but I'm going with Fushi brand bearings for these. Fushi, if you don't know, well, they're not a premium bearing manufacturer by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, for an AliExpress seller, they make decent enough bearings. I'd say that only Reindu makes better bearings than them. They're the second best vendor on AliExpress, in my opinion. So uh, yeah, I went with these and I think I bought 60 bearings and I think I only paid $12 for those thanks to the 11.11 sale. So uh, yeah, and they do look pretty decent. Uh, they actually spec the ZZ type of these bearings, which means the metal seal. Well, I went with the rubber seal, which if you don't know is usually more expensive and yeah, even with that, it doesn't really cost much. Just have to wait for the slow boat, obviously. And uh, for the motion parts, we're using 10 millimeter bar parts. That's the spec with the NPCNC Primo. So I got uh, uh, idlers here and uh, police. And uh, again, they're 10 millimeter. And I'm using genuine uh, it's my luck that it doesn't have the marking there. There we go. Genuine Gates Power Grip uh, 10 millimeter belt. This is the Asian Gates as usual if you follow the 3D printer stuff. So uh, yeah, I got those from Power Journal Aliexpress. These uh, stuff, there's, they have slightly different dimensions than the ones that they spec, but I assume they'll be fine, but uh, I guess we'll see. As for the router, I was planning on using a DC spindle, so uh, yeah, it just makes controlling speeds easier and they're usually much quieter, but uh, after reading through their forums, I decided to change my mind and I'm going with this Makita unit, the RT700C. At least it does have speed control, so uh, I should be able to do take advantage of that which is usually reserved for DC spindles as I said and that will allow me to make sure this unit stays fairly quiet but uh, again we'll see about the performance of this uh, this spindle is one of the recommended ones at least the US version of it with a slightly different part number so I assume it will perform well but again we'll see and uh, yeah I guess that's all of the parts I do uh, actually I forgot to put here I also have a lead screw but uh, yeah it's just a lead screw so uh, again that's I think all of the parts so uh, again last parts are printing right now and we'll be able to start assembling them pretty soon so uh, yeah let's begin the wood pieces are now here so you can see that this large 80 by 80 uh, MDF sheet is going to be the base of the 3D print, not 3D printer, sorry, the CNC machine. I'm just too used to talking about 3D printers. And also I have another one that would be a middle shelf. And these nine by nine uh, pieces, again, that's centimeters, by the way, for those of you who use the stupid units. Uh, these will be the legs and this is just for support. So uh, yeah, I just uh, designed this myself in my head. So, and I don't really have any woodworking experience so we'll see how well this turns out but I think I have all the pieces I need also have some metal corner brackets just a random box of them so uh, yeah hopefully this will be enough if I need them and some wood glue I don't think I'm going to use this actually but uh, yeah I have it if I need it uh, other than that I also uh, most of the green parts are now printed as well so just want to show you the color here so yeah this is it the print quality with the black parts and the green parts didn't turn out that great that's because again this is my first time printing PLA and I didn't uh, do the cooling well enough so you can see the overhangs are a bit prob problematic but yeah this will do the job anyway so this is not a cosmetic print or anything so I'm not uh, too worried about them. 
the last part is now printing here which is the core the biggest part in the bunch that thing alone is like 500 grams but uh, yeah that's the last part so everything should be ready uh, and uh, well yeah that's it I guess I'll start by building the table for this probably I'll put this in the balcony actually not in this room I assembled the table I didn't do a particularly great job but it still is pretty stable it's not wobbling or anything so I'm still happy with it I didn't mount the metal shelf you can see that was meant to support the legs in between just so it they didn't wobble well it's not wobbling and well I really can't continue working on the table right now my back hurts because of the uh, herniated discs so uh, yeah not, not much I can do right now but what I can do is I can uh, continue working on the NPC and C so the first step is to uh, mount the legs so I'll start with that and probably do a little bit more and then I'll come back to you with some progress which will probably be it for this episode since well, I'm recording this pretty late on Thursday and the video should go live on Friday, so yeah, not much I can record in between, but I'll do a bit more and I'll come back to you. So this is where I'm at right now. I mounted the legs as you can see and well, they're pretty rigid. I also started doing the trucks, so you can see that this slide pretty smoothly. There is no drag or anything like that. It's not uh, as loose as they recommend, but I couldn't get it there for some reason. But it, it still slides pretty smoothly, so I don't think it's going to be an issue. I still have to do some progress with these trucks. I need to do the belt routing and well, some uh, stuff like that. Uh, one of the problems I'm facing is, well, in their documentation, if I remember correctly, they specified bolts, but didn't say what type. And since they said bolts, I went with hex heads. So there is no uh, Phillips or uh, hex socket or anything like that. It's just a uh, hex head bolt. Well, apparently uh, they just wanted you to use uh, regular button head screws, which uh, doesn't sound like a big issue, but the thing is, the wrench doesn't really fit in many of the places, so uh, yeah, it's not the easiest thing to assemble, that's taking some time. But uh, still, so far at least it's been doable. So uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I might just give up and buy new screws or something like that, but I am going to try continuing with this. I don't know if you can hear it, but my cat is going crazy. But uh, anyway, uh, this is as much progress as I'm going to be able to make today, so that's going to be it. But before I end, I want to say that I noticed that I'm pretty close to a thousand subscribers. I'm at 982 or something like that. So uh, I'm not going to do a thousand subscribers special or anything like that, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for all of your support and well, I'll continue to do my best in terms of uh, making entertaining or interesting content. That's it for that. Also, uh, since this is a build that's still in progress, the next episode shouldn't take that long because I want to finish this thing. So. It's not going to be like the current War on episodes where it takes like a month or maybe even more in between episodes. The next episode of this should be ready either next week or the week after at the worst case, I think. I'm not going to promise anything, but that's what I'm expecting. So uh, yeah, definitely stay tuned for that. I think in the next episode, most of it, most of the build will be finished. If not all of it, we'll see. And uh, yeah, that's it for this episode, as I said, so I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please leave me a like down below, and thanks for watching.